when there is harmonious integration, centered on the significance of the connection between perception, the object of perception, and the experiencer, then there is mastery of the senses. We're coming to the end of Book 3 of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. And we should bear in mind what they're guiding us towards. They're guiding us towards Kaivalya, which is the title of Book 4. Kaivalya is sometimes described as aloneness, which doesn't really quite catch the tone of what it's about. It might be more accurate to describe it as aloofness, but again, it's not quite capturing the right tone. Because what's it aloof with respect to? What are we being aloof with respect to? It's with respect to the physical world, to all our notions of the physical world. Now we engage with the physical world, we interact with it, we play our part in it, but we do not invest our sense of reality in it. And this is what Book 3 is about. Book 3 is about focusing on the reality of our awareness. This is what we want to become more and more established in. This is Samadhi. There are a lot of beliefs that we hold which undermine this. There are a lot of tendencies that we are in the grip of which undermine this. And book three is arching us beyond these. Now let's turn to the present sutra, sutra 47. The connection between perception, the object of perception and the experiencer. We're not wanting to be philosophical here. So let's see how this is relevant to our immediate situation. At any one point, you would probably describe yourself as an experiencer, somebody who is experiencing something, which we can call an object here, the object of perception. And you would say, there's a process by which you experience that object. Now, theories about the process of perception have varied through the millennia. I think most people nowadays would subscribe to what we call the scientific theory of perception. In the case of sight, we talk about light waves being reflected from an object and being picked up by the eye, which, with the help of the brain, transforms them into a visual image. Now this sutra is asking us to focus on the significance of the connection. And I suppose the connection here is light. And the connection between all the senses really is electricity, which is another form of light. But really, I'm sure this isn't what Patanjali had in mind. What I'd like you to do is consider this question with respect to a past experience of consciousness consciousness which we retrospectively refer to as dream. Consider, consider the dream. Consider a dream. What is the connection between perception, the object of perception, and the experiencer in a dream? So if you're in a dream and you're looking at an object, how do you in the dream experience the object in the dream. After all, in the dream you have eyes. And if I was in your dream as well and I asked you this question, you'd probably give me the scientific explanation. You'd probably say, there's light reflecting off that object going into my eyes. And with the help of my brain, it's constructing a visual image, which somehow I experience. Well, yeah, I think you can see how absurd that story is. 
That's not what happens in dreams, is it? You can see that that whole story is a fabrication. And now, perhaps we can get some inclination of the relevance, the significance of the connection between perception, the object of it, the object of perception, and who's on the receiving end of that perception. Because clearly, people in dreams are perceiving things. Their senses are operating. But the scientific story no longer applies, does it? I wonder if I should say any more about this. I've spoken about this kind of thing in the past. But what I'm going to suggest to you is that the connection between the object, the experiencer, the process of perception is exactly the same in a dream as it is in the so-called waking state. Now you might wish to hold hard and fast to a fundamental distinction between being awake and dreaming, but you'd be quite hard pressed to support that. And I would ask you to consider that holding hard and fast to some fundamental distinction between dreaming and being awake is actually no more than a prejudicial belief that you're hanging on to. And if you want to hang on to it, that's fine. But it's going to limit the progress of your enlightenment practice. Basically, the discrimination between waking and dreaming it's one of these discriminations that consciousness makes within itself. And it's our job as enlightenment practitioners to move beyond all these discriminations. And this is the significance of contemplating the connection between perception, the object of perception, and the perceiver. It's coming back to the realization of the nature of consciousness. And as it says in the Sutra, we obtain mastery of the senses from the point of view that we are no longer being diverted by the senses. So that each time we consider that we're perceiving something, we're really being reminded that this is consciousness at work. And unless there's some job that we actively have to get on with, that we have to direct our attention towards, we can direct our attention back to the very nature of consciousness. So this is mastery of the senses, not having an excuse to have our samadhi disturbed 